Hello. I'm delighted to introduce to you a short summary of a protocol for a cross-sectional clinical study that we performed on our oral nicotine pouch product, Velo. I'm sure many of you are familiar with nicotine pouches, but for those of you who aren't, they are oral nicotine products with a tobacco-free matrix enclosed within a porous pouch. They're used in a similar manner to SNUS, a product already recognized as a reduced risk product through years of epidemiology. As nicotine pouches do not contain tobacco, there is the potential for further harm reduction relative to SNUS. The science on nicotine pouches is still emerging, but over the past few years, we've seen some studies assessing the toxicant profile, in vitro toxicology, some behavioral studies, and several nicotine PK clinical studies. Although these nicotine products are relatively new, we believe they have a significant role to play in tobacco harm reduction. Therefore, there is a need to generate science to support the category and tobacco harm reduction and enable science-based regulation. At BAT, we assess our alternative tobacco and nicotine products using a peer-reviewed assessment framework. As part of this assessment framework, we assess biomarkers of exposure to tobacco toxicants, BOEs, and biomarkers of potential harm associated with the initiating processes of tobacco-related diseases, BOPHs, in users of these products and compare levels to those in smokers. Currently, there are no biomarker data from users of nicotine pouches. Therefore, we conducted a clinical study in Denmark and Sweden with the aim to assess whether the reduced toxicant profile of Velo compared with cigarette smoke leads to a reduction in BOEs and favorable changes in BOPHs. It is hoped that the results of this study will contribute to the growing body of evidence on nicotine pouches. The primary objective of the study was to assess quantitative differences in the levels of key BOPHs listed below, and also NNAL, a BOE for NNK, but also a BOPH linked to the development of lung cancer. The secondary objective was to assess quantitative differences between Solos Velo users and current smokers in the levels of seven BOEs, one BOPH, and two physi physiological measures as listed below. We also assessed qu quantitative differences in the subjective quality of life questionnaire and an oral health assessment. In addition, all endpoints were qualitatively compared among the four study groups. The aim was to recruit 100 Velo users onto the study. We defined these as SOLAS users of any Velo variant for at least six months prior to screening and no other tobacco or nicotine product use during the six months prior to screening. We also aim to recruit 40 smokers, 40 former smokers and 40 never smokers and the criteria for these groups are shown in the table. This slide shows the study design. Participants who passed the screening procedures were invited back to the clinic for a confined visit of approximately 24 hours. During their stay, participants in the Velo and Smoker arms were asked to use product in their usual way, except for when this interfered with certain study procedures. Use Velo pouches were retained for future nicotine content analysis. Over the course of the 24 hours, participants' blood and 24-hour urine samples were collected for biomarker analysis, and re the remaining assessments were also conducted. Samples were then sent to specific bioanalytical labs for analysis. So to summarize the presentation, we have successfully completed a cross-sectional BOE and BOPH clinical study on users of Velo in Sweden and Denmark. We've received the results and we aim to publish these in the future. In addition, a paper describing the protocol in detail has been accepted and will be published soon. Finally, we believe the data from this study should contribute to the growing evidence on the role of nicotine pouches in tobacco harm reduction. Thank you for listening. I'd be happy to take your questions.